This video will show you how to do simple tweening in Photoshop to create an animated GIF. So with an animated GIF, we're going to be creating essentially a file that has multiple frames and it flips through them almost like a flipbook. If you're not familiar with a flipbook, it's basically a series of pieces of paper and each page has a, an individual image and you flip between them to create an animation. So this is the example they have in Wikipedia. You may have done that in the side of a notebook and drawn dots to have things bounce around. Now the thing with this is it's very time consuming because you need to draw each individual item. Now we're not going to be doing anything as complicated as people playing soccer like in that flipbook, but we can do things like move simple items from one side to the other of the screen and when put together it can make a decent animation. But first let's just start with simple tweening. To make a new file in Photoshop I'm going to go ahead and create new and since this is going to be a GIF and it contains all of those files, I want to make sure that my file size is small and so my pixel dimensions would be limited as well. If we have anything too large, the playback won't be great. So what I'm going to do is make a new file. I'm just going to stick with something pretty small. I'm going to go 300 pixels by 300 pixels as my example. I'm going to go with the 72 pixels per inch. That's fine. RGB color. Now, if you have artboards on, I highly recommend that you turn them off. Otherwise, as you animate, um, and if you have anything go off the screen, it will mess with your output for your um, animation. So in this case, make sure to turn off artboards, if that's an option. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Okay, so here's my, my image that I can work in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit just so we can see what's going on better. Now this is going to be a very simple animation, so how about I just make a circle and I'll just bounce a ball around. So I'm going to go to my shape tool and I'm choosing ellipse. Red would be an okay color. And I'm just going to make a circle that will um, be an okay size to move around the screen. Now in this case it only did the outline, so I want to make sure that I add change the fill to be um, the color I'd like as well. I did this in the properties uh, palette over here, but it could be done on the top. I'm going to put that away. Now for this, a couple of things are going to be important. One is in this process, it's a good idea to have your layers palette open. We're just dealing with one item to start with, but later on if you're de dealing with multiple, you will um, need to be able to deal with that. And also, we need a palette that's not showing right now, and that is the timeline. To get to that, I go to the window, pull down, and go to timeline. And that brings up a little extra palette. Now at this point, we need to create a frame animation. Now there are a couple of different things you can do. You can do a frame animation, or you can do a video timeline. I believe the default, when you first open it, it'll say create video timeline. Now what you want to do is do the little pull down, change it to create frame animation, and click the button. If by chance you clicked the create video timeline, it would end up looking like this. Okay, And if you go, oops, I didn't want that, you can always switch back to these three little rectangles in the lower left corner, and it'll convert it to a frame animation. So for GIFs, we'll want to work in this format. Okay, before I continue, notice we have a frame here. This is just the first frame. And underneath, it shows how long it will sit on that frame. Now, since it's an animation, we want them to go on with no delay. So I want to make sure to change this five seconds and this little pull down to no delay. If you forget, you can change it later, but it's just easier to do that up front. So you want to make sure that says no seconds. Okay, so before we continue, let me talk about what tweening is. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a new um, file that I can just draw on for a second. I'm just going to go ahead and make that a little larger. Okay, so we're going to be doing something called tweening. And what that is, is let's say we've got several 
frames. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a few frames here, just some some basic ones, right? Let's just do a simple five five frame animation. Now, if we weren't using the computer's capabilities, we could, uh, let me make a new layer for drawing. We could essentially draw dots in and ourselves, the next one would be here, the next one would be here, and so on. But it won't be very precise, and it's kind of um, time consuming to have to do this yourself. So what we can do instead is draw the starting position and then set the ending position in the final keyframe. And so these are keyframes. And then what we can do is tell the program to fill in the in-between by tweening. So when we're talking about tweening, what it's really talking about is creating the frames in between. So that's where the word tween comes from. And what's going to happen is Photoshop is going to create these in between frames for us based on the keyframes. So let's go back to our animation and do that. So let's say we would like our ball here and I'm going to select that layer to move it. Let's say we just want it to move from here down to the corner. First thing, before you do any of the animation, the best thing to do is set up all the layers, everything the way you want it, right off the bat. It works a lot better than having to deal with it later. Okay, so then we have our timeline with a single frame, and we move things to the first position. Then what we're going to do is create our second keyframe. And to do that, we have our frame selected in timeline. I'm going to go over into this little hamburger menu in my timeline palette and choose new frame. And what that does is it makes a copy of the frame that we have. Now I have the second one selected. I use my move tool and I move that dot to the ending position. Now what's interesting is that we have our single layer, but the Frames in the timeline are controlling where that item is positioned. So if I click on the first one, it shows that first position. You can even see that reflected in the layers palette. Second is the ending position. Now what we want to do is tween this so it will create the frames in between. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the hamburger menu again and choose tween. At this point, I can choose how many frames I'd like to add in between. Now the more frames you add, the smoother it will be, but the longer your um, animation will be and how the larger the file will be. So five frames in between will be a little chunky. How about, I'm going to go ahead and say 10 frames. And so it'll be fairly smooth. And at this point, I'm going to say all layers. So it'll if there's any other changes, it will tween all of them. And I'm also going to leave all of the position, opacity, and effects in effect. Since I have this frame, the second one selected, it gives me the option to tween with the previous frame. And at this point, that's the only place it could tween with. So I go ahead and say OK, and it creates those frames in between. Now what I can do is down here there is a little play button, and I can preview this. Okay, so how about we continue on and move it somewhere else? So I'm going to go ahead and go to the last frame. I'm going to go to the hamburger menu and say new frame. So it creates a copy of the one it was just on. And so now in that final frame again, I'm going to go ahead and move it. How about I move it here? And I can tween these. Now that's a shorter distance, so I can do fewer frames. So I'm going to go here, tween. How about I say seven frames? OK. So now when I hit play, it goes there. And I can continue on. So I could have this continue to be a uh, finished cycle if I'd like. Now in another video, I'll show you more complicated things you can do with this. Um, but I just want to show you how you could save this. And these are just the simple basics of creating a, a basic GIF and tweening.
So now to export this as a GIF, right now it's in Photoshop, you definitely wanna save a version of this in case you wanna edit it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, save as, and I'm going to save this. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. And how about I'll call this um, ball demo. Okay, so that's the Photoshop version. If I open it again, it will keep all these timeline frames available for me to change. Now, if I'd like to share this or play this or put it in a website or um, post it to Instagram or anything like that, I need to create it as a GIF. And to do that, I need to export it. File, export. And the thing that I think works the best is this Save for Web Legacy. It gives you a bunch of control over it. Now what we want to do is change the file type to GIF. And then I can choose how many colors I'd like it to show. Now it can go up to 256 colors. If for some reason you were trying to get the file size way down, you can lower this, but then the quality goes down. I'm just going to leave it at 256. My looping options, I can say if I want it to run forever, so it would repeat or just once, I'm going to leave it at forever. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I can choose where I'd like that to be. I'll just leave it there. File name, ball demo, got dot, um, gif, save. So now let's take a peek outside of Photoshop to see what it looks like. Over on my desktop here, I have balldemo.gif, and I believe I can just double click on it to see it play. It's being played in the Photos um, application. And since it's only 300 by 300, it's doing that. So that's how you can preview it. You can also open it up in a browser to see what it looks like. Now this is something that's pretty small. You're able to email it, attach it to things, and um, it should be viewable by anybody that has a um, web browser. Now, this was a simple basic um, description of how to do a simple tween and save it out. I'll be showing some other more detailed examples in other videos.